Hey everybody, uh, sorry if I look like a mess. I'm wearing this really cool Goku shirt I got off Amazon not that long ago. Uh, it's a little symbolic to this video, I guess. Um, ah, uh, I'm gonna make one of these quick phone videos because I want to talk about something that I hope doesn't take more than 10 minutes because in my time zone where I'm right now, it's like 2 a.m. I'm very tired. I just got done drinking a Bang Energy drink, but I also got done watching Toriyama or Geekdom 101's. For a uh, 40 minute long Akira Toriyama tribute video is wonderful. It's beautiful. It was very informative. It was. It, it was. It was. And yeah, I can relate with him a lot on that video. Now, Toriyama's death has impacted me a lot. It's impacted billions of people. It's changing everything about my life. It's changing me as a person. Day by day. It's a very slow process, but everything around me is definitely... I, I feel like inside me and everything around me is definitely changing in some ways. For mostly in positive ways. I just feel like things are growing in a new direction because of this. And it's just very impactful. And I really want to create my story because of this. This is, this is big to me. This is a book I've been wanting to make since I was nine years old. And if it wasn't for Dragon Ball, my book wouldn't be what it is now. So I hope I could have published either this year, next year, or the next couple of years. I don't know. It's just, it's currently in the editing phase with the final, like, grammar touches and stuff like that. The story itself is done. I just need to re revise its grammar and some spelling issues maybe. And, you know, sometimes I accidentally capitalize, like, words and sentences that shouldn't be capitalized. Like, stuff like that. Like, just little things that might be all over the book and need to closely examine. And hopefully I can find someone to help. So now let me try to get a point on this video. Uh, I made an initial reaction video to Dragon Ball Daima because I was generally frustrated with that project. And a lot of my friends were too. We all, we all were. We, my Dragon Ball fan friends were upset about this project because nobody asked for it. Nobody wanted this. We were all expecting a continuation to Dragon Ball Super with Moro and Granola and whatever else Toy Tower and Toriyama came up together. However... I just want to pay tribute and respect some more to the man and apologize about that. Because I even said in that video, if you are genuinely excited for Dragon Ball Daima, do not let me personally take that away from you. And I meant those words. I did. Am I still, am I now suddenly more excited for it? I don't know, but I definitely will go into it with a more open mind than I did before. And even after me in the video, I, I already thought and felt this way. That I should go into the open mind. No matter what, it is strange to me that this is a sequel to Dragon Ball Super, technically Superhero the movie, and <laughs> that's my dog right there. <laughs> in case you're wondering, she's just she's just relaxing with me. Um, sorry. Uh, yes, it is very strange to me that this is what we have now after Super, but it is okay. It is because it, it just is. You know, I even felt that way back then. Like, yes, I was upset, but I didn't really talk about too much in that video that. Ultimately, no matter how I feel about this project or someone else may feel about it, it is, it is technically okay that it, that this is a sequel to Dragon Ball Super, the anime, and that's or the superhero movie, or whatever the heck. That's okay. It is. But, but what's really sad and kind of not okay is Toriyama's not going to be able to do more than what he already created. I don't know. I don't know what to expect from Dragon Ball without him. A lot of us don't. But... The only Dragon Ball project besides Evolution ugh, that I can think of at the time I had that did not have that did not have Toriyama's involvement that turned out to be all right for them, pretty much just all right is GT. That's all we really have to reference without his something that was it, it did have his work in the beginning like he did draw concepts, but he didn't work on the show itself. Um, and it's not adapted from anything that he created, so. Oh, and, oh, I guess the Dragon Ball Z movies, for, for the most part, the original Dragon Ball movies. Yeah, before, and I also didn't know that Resurrection F was the first movie that he fully wrote. I thought Battle of Gods was. I, I think most of us believe that, but no, it was Resurrection F. That was the one that he truly wrote word for word all the way from beginning, middle to end. Um, and I also didn't know that he wanted to quit Dr. Slump after six months. I thought he, I thought that he had the, like... He felt kind of burnt out from creating that, and that's why he constantly wanted to be done Dragon Ball. But no, no, he felt that way even back then. So, 
I can kind of relate because like sometimes when I make a bit when I make like my big game review videos, I'm like this should be my video that blows up that gets me a ton of subscribers. This should be it. It has not happened yet. It's really weird. Yes, I have over 300, and that's fantastic, but, like, it's not exactly what I was hoping for. And even if I did reach that stretch goal back then, if I had, like, thousands and subscribers after making, like, my big Shenmue review, or my, yeah, or, like, my Pikmin review, or Kemari Damacy or Luigi's Mansion review, man, that would have been awesome. And, and I would have for sure made more videos right after that, more game review videos, but that did not happen. Um, So, however, Terrain was successful. I don't know if he was a millionaire, though, after six months of making Dr. Slump. So maybe maybe the money did have a bit to do with why he kept going. I don't know. I mean, it it probably did. I mean, I don't see why that wouldn't. Money is usually, you know, a pretty healthy motivator, especially if it affects people that you care about in a positive way. So, and it did. It affected his family in a very positive way. So, yeah, I don't know. But I'm hoping the best for my book and my YouTube channel. I really am. My, my book series. And I hope it helps my uh, my life in the long run, you know? And I feel really bad for him by his wedding. Jesus Christ. But anyways, I'm, I, I am still genuinely frustrated that that we're not getting the moral arc or the granola arc adapted into animation yet. I have nothing really against Dragon Ball Daima. It does look unique. I love the animation style. I, I think it's fine for what it is. Don't get me wrong. The only part about it that actually did frustrate me and still kind of does, but not really now anymore as much as initially did, is that it is a continuation to Dragon Ball Super. It's not its own fun little spinoff series. It's a sequel. It's a it's a, it's a a canon, quote-unquote, because you know, nothing Dragon Ball anime is really canon. But it's it's the continuation to Super, the anime. Of the animation and that is that is kind of frustrating it is but again like i said earlier in this video that doesn't really matter it, it is okay it is it is okay that this is what we have are we ever going to get the more arc animated or the granola arc it doesn't really matter if we do or don't because the original manga storyline is so awesome and good just read it i i haven't i don't own the manga of dragon ball super i i've seen clips of the manga i haven't read those chapters in full but i but i understand how great they are and i hear them from fans who have read it uh at my old job at retro taku video games there was this customer that was very passionate about the dragon ball super manga about toriyama in general he was just like me a little bit and he said that the moral arc was peak toriyama peak toriyama he he enjoyed it that much and honestly that should be like i'm not saying <sighs> Here's the thing about that statement. Yes, it's technically enough, uh, in quotation marks, because it is to enjoy it, and, you, and I implore you to read it. I'm going to read it too eventually, probably. It doesn't mean it should never be animated, but but it makes it more acceptable that it may to believe that it may never be animated. It makes it more like... Yeah, basically. It just feels... I just feel better knowing... That it's good the way it is, if that makes sense. When I was a little kid, I wanted a Halo live-action movie. Really badly. A really good one made. But it's how combat evolved. And at the time, my brother's friend said, Why do we need that when the video games are good enough the way they are? He's right. I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. I'm not saying that wouldn't be amazing. I'm not saying it, it, it would be... You know... Yeah, and I feel that, and I feel that way about The Last of Us video game versus the TV show. I think the TV show is, is pretty good from what I've seen. I've only seen the first two episodes or so, but I really enjoyed it. But I just think it's pointless because the game is so cinematic already. Um, and I just, I'm just not impressed. Like, I'm more impressed with the Mario movie as a product than I am with The Last of Us TV show because Mario just seems harder to adapt into a film like that versus. You know, because the video games are video are, are very video game based and, you know, very game design based versus The Last of Us, which is more like cinematic based. I'm not saying, yeah, if that makes sense. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the way those games are designed. Last of Us or Mario or anything like that. No, it's not that, no, that's not because I enjoyed both these franchises, or at least the first game for Last of Us. I haven't played two yet, really. But yeah, if that, I'm hoping what I'm saying makes sense. So, yes, adaptations are fun and they're important, especially when they're done right. But they're not required they're not necessary to enjoy the story yes they're simpler to consume maybe especially if it's on screen 
But reading a book is so important. It is. To us, that's, books are so important. They've been around for thousands of years. They're going to be around even longer than that. Um, I'm not saying that media and, and animation aren't important. They are, yes, yes. I think all forms of media that's created by humans, at least, is important. Um, I'm hoping we can live in a world where, like, AI isn't as scary as it seems like it's going to be. Uh, maybe there's a way to mix, like, human art and AI art together se seamlessly. Kind of like CG and practical effects. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But my point is, is that um, I think all art is sacred. All art is sacred. Uh, unless if it's garbage, like Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, yeah. Anyways, another re Oh, look, there's my Turibot statue in, in uh, Shinron. Right, hold on. Yeah, right there. See them? I forgot those were... I don't know if you can see them, but yeah, I put them up there a while ago on my fireplace. So, as I was trying to say, guys, sorry. Um, Where was it going with this? I made a three or two and a half to three hour long video uh, talking about my story of how I got into the Dragon Ball franchise. I'm still currently working on it. Sorry if it sounds super long. Um, But I advise you, if you want to watch that video, there's nothing wrong with taking breaks from it or listening to it in the background as a podcast video. And if you and if any of you out there watching this ends up watching that video, I highly appreciate it. Thank you. That would mean a lot to me because it's my personal story of how I got into Dragon Ball. And yeah. And I try to cover as much as I can from 2000, from when I was a child till, till now. Really, my story doesn't start to 2009 or 8, but um, I had early experiences too when I was little. You know, they're, they're very little. They're very like minimum, but I still talk about them. So yeah, it means a lot to me. It really would. Um, but, but I don't really talk about Dragon Ball Daima in that video like I am right now. I'm, I'm, I didn't go over explaining it and how I felt about it currently. But, uh, yes, no, I am, I am still looking forward to it, you know? Um, I still think it could be a great, a great product. But without Toriyama, I am worried for it. That's more important to me. Like, the way, I still want it to be a successful, good series. Even though if I may have initially felt frustrated with it at first. I still want it to be important and good and impactful like all of Dragon Ball has been. And I'm sure it will be. Because even, even GT is. Even GT has the spirit of Dragon Ball without Toriyama. It really does. Yes, it has a lot of problems. And yes, pe most people well, seemingly may not like it. or you know, But it's still a very beautiful product. And it's still a really wonderful piece of art. Um... Yeah, it really is. The, the Really, the only bad stuff about GT, in my opinion, is, like, the beginning stuff. Like, it, it, it picks up as soon as Baby enters, you know, the story. And pretty much, yeah. And the, the weird storyline inconsistencies, I understand that. Like, it tries to mix the original anime show and the movies together as, like, one story. But that's fine because it's its own, it's its own thing. All of it is. Um... Sorry, I'm hoping Diamond is great, and, I, and I'm looking forward to it. I am. I'm going to definitely for sure watch it, probably the whole thing in subbed, like I did for Super. Um, well, except for the first 26 episodes, because it's just the first two movies. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Daima. I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping it's great. I don't care if it's if it's, a, if it's an official sequel. It doesn't matter, because it, it doesn't. Like, it doesn't. You know, and I'm just hoping that, which I'm sure they will, that the animators and the screenwriters and everyone working on it pays as much tribute and respect to Toriyama with this Dragon Ball product without him as much as they possibly can. And I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. If, you remember, GT is like the blueprints of this, okay? Right? Like with GT, you know, he just didn't want to be involved. But this time, he's really gone. So, even, even if you may not be the biggest fan of GT... Even though if it's something that you might hate to your core. I would advise for you to give it another shot. Possibly. And to really reconsider your opinion. Maybe. I don't know. But where I'm trying to go with this is GT is still very Dragon Ball-like. Even though if it might be frustrating to you. It, it is. And I would recommend watching it subbed. Or at least with the Japanese score. Because it's, it's a much better experience that way in my opinion. 
Maybe the U.S. soundtrack ruined it for you. I don't know. It did for me. It did for me. And then I watched it with the Jeremy score and I loved it. So, anyways, guys, that's it. Peace out. Thank you for watching. So if you have, um, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Once again, rest in peace, Toriyama Sensei. Me and the whole world misses you very much. I'm sure your family, especially your family, of course. I'm, I'm sure they do. I never met them, but I'm sure they do. Of course they do. How could they not? He seemed like such a loving man. And the world is very strange without you. It is. But I know we'll be okay as a species. I know things will be fine. I know Dragon Ball will be okay as a franchise. <sighs> yeah. Sorry about giving your idea such a hard time. You know, Daima, Dragon Ball Daima. But, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Farewell and goodbye. Till next time.